Welcome back everybody. So today we're going to start talking about the ability system we're going to build. Before I do that though, I want to talk a little bit about the refactoring that's currently still in progress for the project. I did a live stream earlier this week on Wednesday where I kind of went through the changes and put a link into the new GitHub uh, for the project and I'll put that link in here too. I haven't finished putting everything back in yet. For example, the health system doesn't work like it used to and the inventory system isn't up and running yet, but the way that things are set up is a lot more um, separated. Things are a lot more well-defined, I think, and I'm going to continue changing the base here so it'll be better as we go. For today, what we're going to be doing is talking about exactly what I mean when I say an ability system. We're going to create the base input for it and then a base ability script and then discuss the different types of abilities we'd want to have. So let's, uh, let's jump right into this. Okay, so the very first thing I want to do is define an input for the ability. Now if we go to edit, oh yeah, and by the way, you can follow this along with the the previous version of the project, you don't have to use the new version. So if you've already been working on this, this is more kind of me going over how to input the, how to create the ability system less than it is that you need to have your project looking exactly like mine right now. So first thing, if we go to edit, we can go to project settings. Let's create uh, an input axis specifically for the ability. So if you look, one of the things that I changed is I now have a specific input for check so that it's not the sword swipe anymore. Currently I have check set down to be left shift or joystick button zero. Joystick button zero on Windows is the A button uh, and it's different on Mac. Hold on a second, let me bring up one of those images so you guys can see. All right, so here we are. Now uh, you'll see that it's different for Windows versus in Mac OS. For Windows, uh, face button A is joystick button zero, but on Mac OS, face button A is joystick button 16. So make sure that you're paying attention to exactly which face button you're using to make sure that you're using the correct one. And feel free to screenshot this or pause the video here if you wanna see what's going on. But I used A as the uh, check button to check things. Uh, X, I wanted to be the sword button and then I wanted abilities to be either B or Y. I like the idea of Y bringing up an inventory menu uh, because that's very similar to a lot of JRPGs. It's not specifically similar to Zelda though. And I like the idea of B being a, an ability button, but I still haven't finalized that in my head yet. So just to know here, if I want B to be my ability button, I would need that to be joystick button one because I'm currently using a Windows PC. But if you're using a Mac, you'd need that to be joystick button 17. So going back into Unity here, I'm gonna look at my ability button and I have it down as button one, so that's B. And currently I have it as escape on the keyboard. Let's change that. Let's see, I have left shift as check. Let's make this left control. Oh, must be CTRL. Oh, come on now. Okay, cool. By hitting enter, it told me whether or not I, I entered a legitimate button. And since when I hit enter, it cleared it, that meant that C-O-N-T-R-O-L wasn't the proper name. Uh, I'm gonna leave all the rest of this. The gravity is 1,000, dead is 0 0.001, sensitivity is 1,000, it's a key or a mouse button. You don't need to worry about access or joystick number. So there we go, we've got our ability input set up. Now to use this, we're going to create a scriptable object for what the ability is. And then that way, when the player presses the ability button, it's going to access whichever ability is currently active and then perform a specific function from that ability. So for example, we're gonna create a generic function and I'm just gonna call it ability. And in the player controller script, whenever you press the ability button, it's going to find whatever ability is currently active and then turn on the ability um, the ability function. And that might do one of a few different things. For example, it might dash your player, it might create an arrow, it might create fireballs, it might uh, pick up an item, all kinds of stuff. So let's go to our scripts here. And inside scriptable objects, I'm gonna create a new folder 
and I'm gonna call this abilities. And then inside abilities, I'm gonna create a generic ability script. So I'm gonna create a C-sharp script, generic ability. And I'm gonna open this up in Visual Studio, which isn't currently open. So I'll join you guys back here in just a moment. All right, so here we are in this generic ability script. So let's make some uh, references here so that we can create it like a scriptable object. So we're gonna use a create asset menu and we're gonna use a menu name that is equal to, let's have this be part of the scriptable objects. And then inside of the scriptable objects menu, we'll have a new menu that I'm gonna call abilities. And then this is gonna be a generic ability. And then let's give this a file name as well, which is a name for the file as soon as you create it. And we'll call this new generic ability. Now, in order for this to be a scriptable object, we need to derive not from mono behavior, but from scriptable object. And scriptable objects don't receive update or start, so we can just delete these. I'm also going to get rid of collections and collections.generic. I don't think we're going to be using lists or anything else that might need those libraries. So from here, what I'm going to do is create that function that I was talking about that I'm going to call ability. And ability is going to have a few different possible overrides for it, but we're going to kind of keep everything in mind when we're doing that. So we're going to do a public void ability. Now, one thing I did was I went through and I thought about all of the Zelda abilities and where they fit and what you would need to have as arguments for each of them. So let's take a look at that right now. Okay, so and this is just a really quick Google Doc I put together. I made my own personal notes and I'll show a photo of those notes here. Essentially what I did is I went through and I thought about all of the items that you would see in a traditional top-down 2D Zelda. Uh, I was mainly focusing on the Game Boy games, so Oracle of Ages and Seasons, Link's Awakening, and A Link to the Past. Now this isn't all of them by any means, but these were the ones that I could think of off the top of my head that I thought would be interesting to do. It doesn't mean I'm going to cover all of these. However, I will talk about how you can create at least one of each of these, and then you can probably use um, hopefully some kind of just breaking the problem down into pieces to create other versions of that as well. So for the tutorial, I'm planning on doing a dash ability where you dash in a direction. It's not quite the same as the Pegasus boots, but uh, I think it's going to end up looking pretty cool. I'm going to cover a shield ability. People have asked for that quite a bit. I'm going to cover both bombs and the Titan's Mint. The Titan's Mint, though, I think is going to be a Patreon exclusive. And for projectiles, I'm going to cover the boomerang, arrow, and the hookshot. So let's talk about what each of these need. So the projectile, you create at your player's position. So you need to have the player's position, uh, and you also create it at a facing a specific direction. So you need to have the player's direction. So all of these are going to need to have the player's position. It's just kind of a given. But projectiles, on top of that, need to know the player's facing direction. And then the projectile itself will take care of everything else. It'll make itself move, and it'll give knockback to enemies, etc. For held items, you need to have access to the player's position, obviously. Player's animator, because you want to put them into that hold item state where their arms are above their head. And their direction, that way if you create a bomb and then immediately press the throw button, uh, you would need to know in which direction it goes. Things that are in front, and these are things that only affect the direction the player's facing. An example would be the shield, and I'm thinking of the way the shield works in Link's Awakening or the Oracle games, where the shield is an actual item that you, you press to use. Um, the magic lamp, though, uh, bottles, the magic powder, and the bug net all follow the same idea. You need to know where the player is, and it only affects the area directly in front of the player. And then for movement, this is essentially just the Pegasus boots. Um, we could do the rock's feather, but I, I really don't want to mess around with jumping in an overhead perspective like this. I think that's a bit more complicated, but uh, we're going to cover dash. So we need to be able to cover the player's position, 
the facing direction in the animator and the rigid body 2D. Now there's a few different ways that we could do that. First, we could do what's called creating an overload version of this ability. So for example, we could have ability here that takes in, um, we'll do a vector two player position. And then we can have another version. So public void ability, which takes in the player position but then also takes in a vector two player facing direction. And when you call ability from another function, that uh, function call will allow you to choose which one of these you wanna do. Now the problem that we have is I wanna do this in a flexible way so that the player just needs to know that it's ability. And this is called, um, I forget what it's called. This is the Liskov principle. It's one of the solid principles of design where you want to make sure that you're able to call ability from the player and it doesn't matter which ability is there. So long as it's an ability, you'll be able to give it the right arguments and not run into an error. So I'm not going to be using overloads. Instead, I'm going to be using some default references in here. So we're going to have the player position and I'm going to, this one isn't going to be defaulted because everything needs to know that. I'm going to use vector2, we'll call this player facing direction, and I'm going to give it a default value so that it won't always be used. So this is going to be equal to vector2.0, and I'm going to use an animator, animator, player, animator. Let's move this to another line here so that this isn't uh, too bad. Isn't that how you do vector 2.0? Okay, well, what's your problem with that? All right, anyway, we'll finish this. Uh, what else do we need to know? We need to know a rigid body. And we'll call this player rigid body. And I'm going to set this to null for now. And the animator I'm going to set also equal to null. All right, now, what's the problem with this? Oh, must be a compile time constant. So we'll call this a new vector two zero zero. No, I can't do that. Vector two dot vector two construction new. Huh. Okay. Well, I guess I'll just always have to remember that I have to pass in the player facing direction. I know there's another way around this. Uh, I just don't want to, I don't want to look my nose right now. <laughs> so anyway, uh, this is our generic ability. Now I want to be able to override this from inherited classes. So I'm going to change this from a uh, regular public void. I'm going to change it into a public virtual void so that we can override it with inherited classes. Also, we're going to need to make sure that we recreate this create asset menu when we are using our, our different classes. So next video, we're going to be making a dash ability. We'll make sure to have this create asset menu on it. And then we'll do an override void. Uh, and then uh, we'll create the actual dash ability in there. That way, when the player presses the ability button, they dash in the direction they're supposed to. So this was a theory heavy video, maybe not even theory as much as architecture or structure. Um, feel free to leave any comments or questions down below. I, there's not a ton that you would have comments on right now, I don't think. Uh, but that's kind of a, a way to sketch out what we're going to be covering in this. And yeah, we're going to go from there. Uh, I know I know I'm way behind on these videos, so apologies to anybody who's been waiting for them. I just, I don't know, been feeling down lately. But uh, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to let me know in the description. You can follow me on Twitter. Uh, you can join my Discord where there's tons of really great people who answer questions and are just like super smart and just the best. Uh, you can join my Patreon. As little as a buck a month can get you access to some Patreon exclusive videos. Uh, there's a couple on 2D lighting. There's a couple on pushing objects, uh, a couple on mobile controls, etc. So if those are topics you're looking for, you might want to check out my Patreon. Otherwise, I hope everybody has themselves a wonderful day.